I feel like the ring light really just makes this look so like old school YouTube. Hello party people, what's up? Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Tori, thank you so much for being here today. For today's video, I thought we would throw it back and do a monthly favorites video. We'll be talking fashion, makeup, even a favorite book of the month, so I hope you stick around. It is raining outside, so I'm sorry if you can hear the pitter patter of raindrops coming out of the drain pipe near my room. So grab a hot tea, grab a warm coffee or hot cocoa. Let's get cozy and let's get into it. Starting off with fashion favorites, the first thing I want to show you is a pair of sneakers and they are these Reeboks. They're a classic white leather shoe. What more can you say? Yes, my dogs did eat that, so let's not talk about it. <laughs> I've said it before and I'll say it again. I am very much a white leather sneaker kind of girly. You will not catch me in an Adidas Samba anytime soon. These Reeboks are literally the most comfortable shoes I've ever put on my foot. I did not need to spend any time at breaking those bad boys in. They, they were comfortable from the beginning and I cannot say nicer things. So that's that. The second fashion favorite I have is a gray sweater from Maritzia and it was featured in my latest lookbook. So let's roll the footage. It is this oversized cable knit sweater. It is the perfect shade of gray. It drapes on my body really nicely and it really just came at the perfect time. I found it during their winter sale and it's also like in January, you just want to be comfy and cozy. I work from home so it was something really easy I could just throw on all the time. If you know me in real life, you've seen me in this sweater and I feel like that is a testament to how much I loved it in the month of January. Speaking of sweaters, my next fashion favorite is a tool and it is this sweater shaver from Conair. It is $15. I literally got this at Target. It has three settings so you can choose how fine you want the shave to be and it's battery operated. So you don't need to think about charging it. I am at the big age of 27. So now I do feel a need to flex my maturity. And one way I'm flexing my maturity in the presentation of my clothes is in the care and upkeep of them. So whether that's getting shoes cobbled, getting things hemmed or shaving my sweaters, I've just been trying to incorporate that practice in a bunch of different ways and in a lot of small and honestly more cost effective ways. There's been a lot of discourse online about the fabrics that we put on our body and trying to buy more natural fibers. However, I find that wool fibers are way too itchy for me and cashmere is just something that's a little bit outside of my tax bracket at the moment and instead of buying sweaters to replace the ones i have i just want to take better care of the acrylic and synthetic ones that i have a lot of my synthetic sweaters are very soft to the touch and are made to feel super plush so because they are so soft and plush they do pill more easily so i love having a sweater shaver just so i can get rid of the pilling as quickly as i can and to keep them looking as pristine and nice as i can so love this thing game changer the next three fashion things i want to talk about are accessories i have three accessories that have been on constant rotation in the month of january the first accessory is this belt from lisa says ga i'm really into this belt right now for a couple different reasons one i'm really loving the current resurgence we're having on belts i feel like belts are becoming more in style as an accessory again and they're just becoming more fun and playful i love the play on the grommet and the studded belt that this belt gives um, I feel like because it's silver, it's also kind of playing into the metallic and silver takeover that we're seeing on a lot of accessories. I've also just become a denim girly in the past few months. So just having a nice belt on hand has been really fun. I also believe this belt is supposed to be a dupe for like the $500 cape belt. This belt has a lot of weight to it, which I really like. So it does feel a little luxurious. So it's really fun. My second accessory is a pair of earrings. They are the Anthropology Bottega Veneta dupes. I've been on the lookout for a pair of silver earrings that have a bit more of like that fun organic shape and I love the dupes, I'm not gonna lie. I love the teardrop element. These are also super light compared to a lot of the other silver earrings I was looking at. I love them so much. There's really nothing else to say. I, I feel like they could go perfectly with the belt I just showed off, but I feel like they're a really beautiful statement and they don't weigh down my ears, which is my number one concern when it comes to earrings. The third and final accessory I wanna talk about should come at no surprise if you've been following this channel or even my TikTok, and that is this custom charm necklace I got from Shop 
shop Charming Tea on Etsy. I found the seller through Avery Claire, AKA Girls Who Cluster over on TikTok. And I'm so happy I did. I feel like Etsy has just become a place for drop shippers now. So it is really rare to find a really nice small business and shop Charming Tea is an amazing small business. The owner, Christina, is so nice. This is a customizable charm necklace. So we did go through a few iterations and we went through some changes, but this is what it looks like up close. If you want a more in-depth breakdown on why I chose certain charms, I did post a more long form breakdown over on TikTok. So I'll link it below. I just love this. It feels like my personality in a necklace. And I just love the fun, playful energy it brings to any outfit. I am obsessed with it. I, honestly, charm necklaces were on my mood board for a very long time, so I'm so happy I found the perfect charm necklace for me. I have just three more favorites left, and two of them are skincare and makeup products. Let's start with the skincare product. My favorite skincare product has been these MetaHeal toner pads. I have the Matacazo side. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. I have the Matacazo side blemish pads. I use this during my nighttime routine. I have cystic acne and I've been dealing this for a little over three years now. I feel like the texture of my acne has really smoothed down since using these. At night, I'll place the pads on the part of my cheeks that have like the highest concentration of acne and I'll just like set it on there and have it marinate for a couple of minutes and then just swipe towards the outside of my face. And I feel like I've noticed an amazing difference. I love this stuff. These are very inexpensive and I feel like a great deal if you can find them at any like K-Beauty certified retailer. I found these at California Marketplace over in K-Town in LA. Um, I know these did go viral on TikTok and I feel like I've just been so aware of not getting things that are fake skincare products because apparently that is a real thing. Love this stuff. So good. Very much worth the hype. The second product I want to talk about is another one that is very hyped up, but one that I think is very worth it. And that is the Patrick Ta Cheek Duos. I'm trying really hard not to blind you or to show how messy my room is. I got this Cheek Duo in the shade She's Wanted and I'm actually not wearing it today. Um, I did not think that through, um, but it is just this duo of the most beautiful berry shades. Before purchasing this product, I was very much a mauve blush only kind of girly, but this really brought me outside of my comfort zone. I love placing these on like the higher point of my cheeks to really give myself that like 80s blush moment. Um, I love it. I don't know what else to say. Definitely worth the hype. I don't think this is true for all of Patrick Ta's products, but definitely for this shade in particular, there is a little bit of a learning curve because it is so pigmented, um, but I love it. And it's definitely one of my beauty faves. The last thing I wanna talk about is my favorite read from January. In January, I only finished two books, which is, you know, not the best start when it comes to my 2024 reading goals. However, I'm trying to practice grace and I'm trying to be a little bit more thoughtful in the books that I choose. My favorite book of the month was A Woman Is No Man by Itaf Ram, Itaf Room. I totally should have looked up how to pronounce the author's name before recording this, but this was actually the book club pick for my um, IRL book club. And I really, I don't want to say I enjoyed reading this just because of like the read the story material per se, but I did enjoy my reading experience of this book and I did enjoy the conversations that arose from reading this book and discussing it with other people. This book follows three generations of Palestinian women, two of whom moved from Palestine to America and then one who was born in America. So it follows a grandmother, a daughter and a granddaughter. The two main women it focuses on are Isra and Dea. Isra is a woman who was living in Palestine in the 1990s and moves to America with her new husband. And while in America, they moved to Brooklyn and Isra has four daughters, the eldest being Dea. It follows their story as well as the paternal grandmother's story. It was very interesting. I would say it was a little bit more like cut and dry than I was expecting. I feel like when I read stories that take place through generations, there's always a lot more poetic language but this book was very selective in when the prose was beautiful and poetic it was especially poetic when it would talk about like palestinian food and elements of culture which i thought was very interesting I would definitely look up trigger warnings to this book because it does deal with very heavy topics as you can tell from the title it definitely deals with like patriarchy and sexism it deals with generational trauma gener generational healing it talks about where is a woman's place in the world and who can dictate that is it their relatives is it their elders is it the culture they're in i definitely want to read more of etoff's work in the future i believe 
believe she has another book out called Evil Eye, which I'm very interested in as well. And yeah, I feel like even though I didn't read a lot in January, this book has set us up for success. Um, there is a lot happening. I'm feeling a little overstimulated by the pitter patter of rain that I can hear right now. I hope you enjoyed. Please let me know what your January favorites were, if any of these really speak to you, or if you have any book recommendations, I would love to hear them. If you wanna see more from me, feel free to subscribe or follow me on TikTok. I will see you very soon for the next video. Bye.